there, you found us here at Storytime with Miss Becky. I'm Miss Becky, and this is our friend Bear, who loves to read along with you. Bear has a question for you. If you were a little whale, what would you do if you got lost in the big ocean? How would you feel? Well, little whale is lost and feeling lonely. Let's put on the magic reading glasses and swim along with Little Whale and see if we can help him find his family. The Loneliest Whale Written by Jessica Therian The Loneliest Whale was a sad little lad. He'd gone swimming alone and lost his dad. So he sang their song and hummed their tune, hoping dad would hear him soon. Along came a turtle. La la loop de doo. But the turtle couldn't speak whale. So he hid inside a shoe. Can anybody hear me? Little whale called out. A pig fish swam past him, turning up his snout. That octopus seems friendly, he thought as he swam on. He whistled twice to drag him down, but the octopus was gone. The scuttle of a crab made him turn, caught his eye. Hey, said the lonely whale, but the crab crawled on by. His cry was a loud one ringing out through the sea. Please, I'm alone. Can anyone hear me? A shadow in the distance, big, strong, and dark. Little Whale got real quiet as he watched a great white shark. He whimpered and he whined. Why'd I leave my mom behind? All alone in the ocean wasn't much fun. I wish I was with my dad swimming in the sun. Then a sound so familiar led him along sunken rocks. His baby brother's laughter from under the docks. Ha ha ha! Little Whale waved a fin. Look, I found you! I'm here! Mom heard him and smiled. We missed you, my dear. He swam toward his family faster than fast. The loneliest whale had come home at last. Bear's wondering, is little whale the loneliest whale now? <laughs> no, Bear, he's with his family. But do you remember how little Bear got lost? Well, if you said he went swimming alone, you're right. So Bear wonders, what do you think Little Whale will tell his baby brother never to do? Well, Bear thinks he'll tell him, don't swim alone. <laughs> do you agree? Bear hopes you don't swim alone and that you come back soon for more family adventures. Bye for now. Please subscribe.
Hi there, you found us here. It's story time with Miss Becky. I'm Miss Becky, and this is our friend Bear, who loves to read along with you. Bear has a question for you. Have you ever made a mistake, but didn't think it was your fault? Once or twice, maybe? <laughs> well, Noodle says he is always getting caught making mistakes that are not his fault. Let's put on the magic reading glasses and see if you think Noodle is right. But it's not my fault, written by Julia Cook. My name is Norman David Edwards, but everybody calls me Noodle. Sometimes things happen to me that get me into trouble. But it's not my fault. Things just aren't the way they should be. I feel like everybody's always picking on me. I always get blamed and it's not my fault. Seems like I'm the only one that ever gets caught. He did it again. Quit it. Noodle did it. Teacher. Yesterday, I didn't get my math homework done. So this morning, my teacher made me stay in from recess and do it. Rats. But it wasn't my fault. Last night, I had to go to my big brother's basketball game and it went into overtime. And by the time I finally got home, it was too late to do my homework so my mom made me go to bed. After recess, we all headed to the library to work on our science reports. Since my teacher wouldn't let me go to recess, I had lots of extra energy. I felt kind of twitchy. On the way down the hall, I jumped up high and tried to touch the light. On the way down, Marigold got in my airspace and her head hit my arm. Ouch! Teacher Noodle hit me. But it's not my fault. You didn't let me go out to recess and my legs just needed to jump. It wasn't my fault. My arm did it. And it was just a little bump. I got sent to the end of the line. Rats. Then when I got to the library, I couldn't work on my report on the duck-billed platypus because the media specialist wouldn't let me check out the book that I needed. Noodle, you can't check out a new book until you bring your overdue book back. But it's not my fault. I looked in my backpack this morning as soon as I got to school. My mom didn't remind me to put it in there. So please, can you bend the rules? Nope. Rats. In PE, Ross Gray tripped me on purpose and then he laughed at me when I fell down. So I pushed him over. Teacher, Noodle pushed me, but it's not my fault. Rose Gray tripped me on purpose and that made me really feel bad. And then he laughed when I fell, which made me really mad. Noodle did it. He did it again. My hands were so mad that I pushed him, even though my brain told them not to. Things just aren't the way they should be. I feel like everybody's always picking on me. I always get blamed and it's not my fault. Seems like I'm the only one that ever gets caught. Noodle, please stop talking. But it's not my fault. Georgie talked to me first. Noodle, please stop lollygagging. But it's not my fault. I was born this way. Besides, the pencil sharpener needed to be emptied. 
Noodle, you just interrupted again. But it's not my fault. My mouth is addicted to talking. Noodle, we don't stick our tongue out at other kids. But it's not my fault. TJ did it to me first and then he stared at me so I had to do it back to him. Besides, it doesn't say we can't do that in the school handbook. Just as my teacher was about to say noodle for the 50,000th time, the bell rang. Whew. Noodle, my teacher said, please stay after for a minute so we can have a talk. Rats. Noodle, today you had a really rough day. But it's not my fault. Noodle, there are no buts in my sentence. Today you had a really rough day. And tomorrow is a brand new day. I can't wait to see what you can do with your tomorrow. Have a safe walk home. When I got into my house, my mom gave me the unibrow. I could tell just by the way she looked at me that I was in trouble. Rats! Noodle, your teacher emailed me and told me that today at school you had a really rough day. But it's not my fault. I didn't get my homework done because the game went late and you made me go to bed. My teacher wouldn't let me go out to recess, and my legs needed to jump. Marigold got in my airspace, and her head hit my arm. I couldn't do my report on the duck-billed platypus because the media specialist wouldn't let me check out the book I needed because you forgot to remind me to put my overdue book in my backpack this morning. Ross Gray tripped me and laughed when I fell down, and that made my hands mad. Georgie talked to me first. The pencil sharpener needed to be emptied. My mouth is addicted to talking. And it doesn't say in the school handbook that I can't stick my tongue out at people. Besides, I had to. TJ was staring at me, and he did it to me first. Things just aren't the way they should be. I feel like everybody's always picking on me. I always get blamed and it's not my fault. Seems like I'm the only one that ever gets caught. Poor me. Noodle, I'm not talking about whose fault it is, mom said. I'm talking about whose responsibility it is. Huh? You are responsible for the things that you do, for your choices at home and your choices at school. Blaming others is a reason, but it's not an excuse. If you keep playing this game, you surely will lose. You are in charge of letting me know when you have homework. You are in charge of returning your library books. And you are in charge of your legs, your arms, your hands, your voice, and your tongue. Today you made a few mistakes and it caused your day to be rough. But don't blame others for your poor choices because that will make your life tough. Instead, Focus on what needs to be done. Whenever you make a mistake, own up and become more responsible for the choices that you've made. Noodle, everybody makes mistakes and mistakes can be a good thing because every time you make one, it gives you a chance to learn something, mom said. If you blame other people for your mistakes, you give away your chances to learn. Don't make an excuse when you do something wrong. Just own it and say, yep, I did that. Now what can I do to improve my situation? Noodle, I love you with all of my heart 
and I wish I could solve all of your problems for you, but I can't. My job is to teach you to become your own problem solver. The next time you make a mistake on the inside, think, yep, that was me. It's going to be hard, but like everyone says, the good stuff in life is not free. If you're brave enough to own your mistakes, imagine how great you'll become. You'll learn a lot. You'll make better choices and your life will be so much more fun. Don't be a blamer. You're better than that. Use your mistakes to help you grow. Get rid of the phrase, but it's not my fault and show the world how much you know. Maybe my mom was right. Maybe I was blaming others for my mistakes. Yep, I guess I did make a few wrong choices today. As soon as I got to school the next day, I went to the library, turned in my overdue book, and checked out the book I needed for my report on the duck-billed platypus. When I walked into my classroom, my teacher put her arm around me and whispered, Noodle, yesterday you had a really rough day, and today is a brand new day. I can't wait to see what you can do with your today. Then she said, Class, it's time for me to collect the rough drafts of your science papers. When she got to my desk, I said, I don't have mine, but it's, but it's, but it's going to be done by tomorrow morning. I just checked out the book that I needed. Way to go, Noodle! You did it! You took responsibility for your actions. I am so proud of how brave you are. As a reward, I'm going to give you an extra day to get your rough draft done. When you hand it in tomorrow, it won't be counted late. But my brother has another basketball game tonight and I guess I won't be going. Rats. Bear's wondering, do you think Noodle is trying to be responsible? Lots of yeses, Bear. Do you think Noodle learned something from all of his mistakes? Yes. Bear wonders if you think we should blame others or try to learn something from our mistakes. What do you think? Well, Bear also hopes you come back soon for more adventures in turning mistakes into better choices. Bye for now. Please subscribe. Hi there, you found us here at Storytime with Miss Becky. I'm Miss Becky, and this is our friend Bear who loves to read along with you. Bear has a question for you. Do you ever feel like something special always happens on birthdays? Do you hope something special will happen on yours? <laughs> well, Peter is really hoping a special friend named Amy will come to his birthday party. He's writing a letter to invite her right now. Let's put on the magic reading glasses and see if Amy comes. A Letter to Amy by Ezra Jack Keats. I'm writing a letter to Amy. I'm inviting her to my party, Peter announced. Why don't you just ask her? You didn't write to anyone else, said his mother. Peter stared at the sheet of paper for a while and said, We'll 
This way, it's sort of special. He folded the letter quite a few times, put it in the envelope, and sealed it. Now I'll mail it, he said. What did you write? his mother asked. Will you please come to my birthday party, Peter? You should tell her when to come. So he wrote on the back of the envelope, It is this Saturday at 2. Now I'll mail it. Put on a stamp. He did and started to leave. Wear your raincoat. It looks like rain. He put it on and said, It looks like rain. You'd better stay in, Willie, and ran out to mail his letter. Walking to the mailbox, Peter looked at the sky. Dark clouds raced across it like wild horses. He glanced up at Amy's window. She wasn't there. Only Peppy, her parrot, sat peering down. Willie, didn't I tell you to stay home? Peter thought, what will the boys say when they see a girl at my party? Suddenly, there was a flash of lightning and a roar of thunder. A strong wind blew the letter out of his hand. Peter chased the letter. He tried to stop it with his foot, but it blew away. Then it flew high into the air and landed, skipping across a hopscotch game. The letter blew this way and that. Peter chased it this way and that. He couldn't catch it. Big drops of rain began to fall. Just then, someone turned the corner. It was Amy. She waved to him. The letter flew right toward her. She mustn't see it or the surprise will be spoiled. They both ran for the letter. In his great hurry, Peter bumped into Amy. He caught the letter before she could see it was for her. Quickly, he stuffed the letter into the mailbox. He looked for Amy, but she had run off crying. Now she'll never come to my party, thought Peter. He saw his reflection in the street. It looked all mixed up. When Peter got back to his house, his mother asked, Did you mail your letter? Yes, he said sadly. Saturday came at last. Everybody arrived but Amy. Shall I bring the cake out now? His mother asked Peter. Let's wait a little, said Peter. Now, bring it out now, chanted the boys. All right, said Peter slowly. Bring it out now. Just then, the door opened. In walked Amy with her parrot. A girl, ugh, said Eddie. Happy birthday, Peter, said Amy. Happy birthday, Peter, repeated the parrot. Peter's mother brought in the cake she had baked and lit the candles. Everyone sang. Make a wish, cried Amy. Wish for a truck full of ice cream, shouted Eddie. A store full of candy and no stomach ache. But Peter made his own wish and blew out all the candles at once. Bear's wondering, 
Do you think Amy felt extra special getting Peter's letter? Yes. How do you think Peter felt when Amy walked in the door? Maybe very special too? Hmm. Bear wonders if you can imagine what Peter wished for when he blew out the candles. What do you think? Bear and I hope you come back soon for more adventures in making others feel extra special. Bye for now. Please subscribe. Hi there, you found us here at Storytime with Miss Becky. I'm Miss Becky, and this is our friend Bear, who loves to read along with you. Bear has a question for you. Have you ever seen real snow coming down? If yes, do you remember your first snowy day? Well, this is Peter's first snowy day. Let's put on the magic reading glasses and see what Peter will do when he sees snow for the first time. The Snowy Day by Ezra Jack Keats. One winter morning, Peter woke up and looked out the window. Snow had fallen during the night. It covered everything as far as he could see. After breakfast, he put on his snowsuit and ran outside. The snow was piled up very high along the street to make a path for walking. Crunch, 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 his feet sank into the snow. He walked with his toes pointing out like this. He walked with his toes pointing in like that. Then he dragged his feet slowly to make tracks. And he found something sticking out of the snow that made a new track. It was a stick. A stick that was just right for smacking a snow-covered tree. Down fell the snow, plop, on top of Peter's head. He thought it would be fun to join the big boys in their snowball fight. But he knew he wasn't old enough. Not yet. So he made a smiling snowman. And he made angels. He pretended he was a mountain climber. He climbed up a great, big, tall, heaping mountain of snow and slid all the way down. He picked up a handful of snow and another and still another. He packed it round and firm and put the snowball in his pocket for tomorrow. Then he went into his warm house. He told his mother all about his adventures while she took off his wet socks. And he thought and thought and thought about them. Before he got into bed, he looked in his pocket. His pocket was empty. The snowball wasn't there. He felt very sad. While he slept, he dreamed that the sun had melted all the snow away. But when he woke up, his dream was gone. The snow was still everywhere. New snow was falling. 
After breakfast, he called to his friend from across the hall, and they went out together into the deep, deep snow. Right now, would you like to take a walk in the deep, deep snow and hear the crunch, crunch, crunch of your feet? Yes, if you had your snowsuit. <laughs> How about putting a snowball in your pocket for tomorrow? <laughs> well, Bear hopes you always remember your first day in the snow and that you come back soon for more adventures in discovering something for the first time. Bye for now. Please subscribe. Hi there, you found us here at Storytime with Miss Becky. I'm Miss Becky and this is our friend Bear who loves to read along with you. Bear has a question for you. Have you ever seen someone who seems to need some understanding and help? Maybe someone who seems a bit different from most kids you see? Some say yes, Bear. Well, Louie is different. He's kind of quiet. But he's about to go see a puppet play that some kids are putting on. Let's put on the magic reading glasses and see if something happens that helps the kids understand Louie better. Louie by Ezra Jack Keats. Susie and Roberto were putting on a puppet show. They had spent a lot of time making the puppets. Kids were trying to find seats next to their friends. Wow, everybody's here, said Susie. There's Louie, said Roberto. I never heard a word out of him. Me neither, said Susie. Well, let's get started. The curtain opened. A mouse puppet appeared on the stage. The mouse introduced Gussie. When Louie saw Gussie, he stood up. Hey, sit down. We can't see through you, Louie. Come on, sit down, will ya? Louie just stood and stared. Hello, he said. Hello, hello. What's going on? asked Susie. Roberto peeked over the stage. It's Louie, he whispered. He's talking to Gussie. He won't stop. What'll we do? Susie thought for a moment. We'd better have Gussie answer him. Hi, Louie, Susie said in Gussie's voice. Nice to see you. But me and the mouse got to get on with the show. Will you please sit down? There's lots more to come. Louie sat down. The place got quiet and the play continued. The kids laughed at the adventures of Gussie and the mouse. When the show ended, the puppets bowed. Everyone cheered and clapped. Louie jumped up and clapped loudest and longest. As everyone was leaving, Susie and Roberto saw Louie. Would you like to say goodbye to Gussie? Susie asked. Louie grabbed the puppet and held on to it. What'll I do now? Susie whispered to Roberto. Gussie is very tired, explained Roberto. She has to go home now. Louie waited a minute, then let go of Gussie. Susie and Roberto started off. 
Louie waved until they were out of sight. Then he walked home. He went into his room and sat on the floor. He dreamed he was feeding Gussie from a huge ice cream cone. Suddenly, Gussie disappeared. And the cone too. Louie was falling down, down, down. Now he was floating. There were kids all around. They were making fun of him. Hello, hello. Nah, it's goodbye, goodbye. Oh yeah, hello and goodbye, Louie. Louie, his mother called. Louie, she called. What are you doing? He didn't answer. He was still sad from his dream. His mother went on. Someone slipped a note for you under the door. It says, hello, hello, hello. Go outside and follow the long green string. Louis got up and went outside. Bear's wondering, did the kids give their Gussie puppet to Louie? Yes, Bear. Why? Well, some are saying because the kids saw how much Louie loved Gussie, Bear. Why do you think Louie loved Gussie? Hmm, Bear thinks Louie might have liked the way Gussie smiled. Well, do you think a smile means hello? Bear's asking, is a smiling, friendly, hello, what Louie wanted most? Well, Bear's also asking you to come back soon for more adventures in understanding how others feel. Bye for now. Please subscribe. Hi there, you found us here at Storytime with Miss Becky. I'm Miss Becky, and this is our friend Bear, who loves to read along with you. Bear has a question for you. Have you ever had an unlucky day when things do not go your way? Yes, many have, Bear. <laughs> well, Monkey and Duck are having a very unlucky day. In fact, it looks like they might even crash into each other. Let's put on the magic reading glasses and see what it takes for Monkey and Duck to get some luck. Monkey and Duck Find Some Luck by Donna and John Curtin Jr. Hi, my name is Monkey, and I want to tell you a story about how I met my best friend, Duck. One day, Monkey was walking in the park when suddenly a duck came flying out of nowhere over Monkey's head and almost hit him. Crash! Slam! Monkey rushed over to see if Duck was okay. He said he was okay, but he hurt his leg and he needed a doctor. 
So, Monkey started to think about what he should do next. Monkey then said, I have an idea. They tried to hobble to get to the doctor. After a few minutes, they realized that hobbling was not going to work. Duck then had an idea. Duck said, we can fly. So Monkey held on to Duck's good foot. But suddenly, crash! After seeing stars, Monkey noticed he hurt his arm. He saw a wagon and said, Wait, we can use that wagon. The only problem is I cannot steer it because of my hurt arm. So Duck said, I will steer it because my wings are not hurt. It was working fine at first. However, as they went downhill and started to gain speed, the steering stick suddenly came off. They were headed right towards the pond. Oh no, said Duck, and the wagon crashed into the pond. Monkey said, okay, I think we need to ask someone for help. They both went up to the first person they saw and asked for help. The person replied, I cannot help you because I am a clown and I need to balance my plates. Then they went up to another person looking for help and this person said to them, I cannot help you because I am a ballerina and I need to stay on my toes. They saw another person and asked if he could help them. And this person said, Of course, I am a doctor. After getting all fixed up at the doctor's office, Duck said, Today has been a very lucky day. Monkey said, what are you talking about? We both hurt ourselves. Duck said, because I met my new best friend. And that's the story of how I met my best friend, Duck. The End Bear's wondering, did you see some tears just now in monkeys and duck's eyes? Some noticed their tears, Bear. Hmm, were those sad tears or happy tears, Bear? Well, Bear says monkey and bear stuck together as they went through a lot of hard things. Do you agree? Do you think that's why they became best friends? Well, Bear is happy they are sticking together, and he also hopes you come back soon for more adventures in making friends. Bye for now. Please subscribe. Hi there, you found us here at Storytime with Miss Becky. 
I'm Miss Becky, and this is our friend Bear, who loves to read along with you. Bear has a question for you. Have you ever tried hunting for your ABCs in funny places? Some say, not yet, Bear. Well, Bear thinks it's so much fun to do together. Let's put on the magic reading glasses and see if you can help Bear find seven letters hiding on each page. Let's go. A, B, C. Can you find me? By Jackie Tower. Owls and birds on this beautiful day. Can you find all the A's? Look all around. What do you see? Can you find all the bees? Decorations fill the tree. Can you find all the seas? Gently swaying in the breeze. Can you find all the D's? Butterflies flying high as can be. Can you find all the E's? We'll take these vegetables to the chef. Can you find all the F's? A special treat. Yummy candies. Can you find all the G's? Reel in the fish and measure with the gauges. Can you find all the H's? With these tools, you can build so high. Can you find all the eyes? A little candy before we play. Can you find all the J's? Ouch! A little bandage to help the owie go away. Can you find all the K's? You're so smart and will excel. Can you find all the L's? Little blocks, what's on them? Can you find all the M's? We match our socks every now and then. Can you find all the ends? On a windy day, the leaves will blow. Can you find all the O's? Finding letters is fun and carefree. Can you find all the P's?
Sending love from me to you. Can you find all the cues? All the rocks go into my jar. Can you find all the R's? Juicy fruits can make some messes. Can you find all the S's? Pinwheels will spin when you sneeze. Can you find all the T's? A pretty picture for you to view. Can you find all the U's? I love to sing the ABCs. Can you find all the V's? On Halloween, we all say boo. Can you find all the W's? These turkeys are getting a little bit reckless. Can you find all the X's? <laughs> Lots of colors and shapes to spy. Can you find all the Y's? Always remember to say please. Can you find all the Z's? Pretty please. Bear's wondering, did you find some letters hiding out? Yes, Bear. In rocks and hearts and all sorts of surprise places. Well, Bear says thank you for your help. And he also hopes you'll come back soon for more adventures in hunting for hidden letters everywhere. Bye for now. Please subscribe. Hi there, you found us here at Storytime with Miss Becky. I'm Miss Becky and this is our friend Bear who loves to read along with you. Bear has a question for you. Would you like to be part of a family or live by yourself? Many say family, Bear. So if you did not have a family, would you want to visit your friend's family? Well, Baxter the dog lives by himself, but his friends are about to go on a family reunion trip, and Baxter really wishes he could share in their fun. Let's put on the magic reading glasses and see if Baxter can figure out a way to go with the birds. B for Baxter by Ted Simonin. One day, Baxter was sitting in his backyard thinking about how to build the ultimate ball throwing machine when he heard a voice calling his name. Baxter! 
said the voice, and Baxter turned to see his friend Marcus land on the fence. It's so nice to see you. I've brought someone I want you to meet. This is my sister Fiona. It's nice to meet you, Baxter," said Fiona. "My brother has told me so much about you." We're getting ready to fly south," explained Marcus. "This time each year we meet our parents at our family tree in Florida for our annual reunion." You're flying all the way to Florida for a family reunion? Sounds like fun. Count me in," said Baxter. Fiona glanced at her brother. "Count me in," she whispered. "But Baxter's not part of our family." Then she turned and said loudly, "But Baxter." How will you get to Florida? You don't have wings to fly. As quickly as he could, Baxter ran to his doghouse. He dove in head first, threw things everywhere, and pulled out a state-of-the-art jetpack. Baxter threw the jetpack over his shoulders and shot straight into the air. Woohoo! cried Baxter. There's no better way to fly. Come on, Fiona, let's go. Marcus said. Really, Marcus? You're inviting a dog to our family reunion? Trust me, Fiona. Baxter's not just some dumb dog. You will grow to love him. I promise. And with those words, Baxter and the two birds took to the sky. They flew over mountains and valleys and trees. And a few days later, look," said Marcus. "There's the Grand Canyon." Marcus and I stop here every year," said Fiona. "It's a family tradition." Last year, we found a piece of driftwood and floated down the river all day long. You floated down the river," said Baxter. "I have an idea. Let's land." Baxter and the two birds flew to the ground and landed next to the Colorado River. As quickly as he could, Baxter unzipped the zipper on his jetpack. Reached deep inside and pulled out a large raft with three paddles. Who wants to go rafting? Asked Baxter. And for the rest of the day, Baxter and the two birds talked and laughed and had a wonderful time traveling down the river, until finally. Marcus and Fiona landed on a nearby tree, and Baxter plopped down on the ground. Baxter, how did you fit that raft into your jetpack? Asked Fiona. It was easy, said Baxter. I scanned it with the light rays from my supersonic shrinking machine. If you'd like, I'll show it to you when we get home. I'd like that, said Fiona. And with those words, the three of them fell fast asleep. The next morning, Baxter and the two birds took to the sky again. They flew over rivers and fields and dirt-covered roads. And a few days later, look," said Marcus. "There's the city of New Orleans." Marcus and I always stop here too," said Fiona. Last year we listened to live jazz music in the streets for hours and hours. Live music," said Baxter. "I have an idea. Let's land." Baxter and the two birds flew to the ground and landed on Bourbon Street. As quickly as he could, 
Baxter unzipped the zipper on his jetpack, reached in as far as he could, and pulled out a piano, a saxophone, and a trumpet. Who wants to make some music? asked Baxter. And for the rest of the day, Baxter pounded on the keys of the piano. Fiona poured her heart into the saxophone, and Marcus blew every last breath into the trumpet. The three of them had a grand old time until finally. Marcus and Fiona landed on a nearby tree, and Baxter plopped down on a patch of grass. Baxter, where did you learn how to play the piano like that? asked Fiona. It was easy, said Baxter. I have a baby grand piano in my doghouse, and I practice every day. If you'd like, I'll show it to you when we get home. I'd like that," said Fiona. And with those words, the three of them fell fast asleep. The next morning, Baxter and the two birds took to the sky again. They flew over water and beaches and gator-filled swamps. And a few days later, look," said Fiona. "We made it. There's our family tree." Baxter and the two birds flew to the ground. They looked around for Marcus and Fiona's family, but soon realized no one was to be found. That's odd," said Fiona. "They always meet us here every year." Suddenly, Baxter spotted a square piece of wood not far from the tree. Look! He picked it up and gave it to Marcus. Marcus closely examined the piece of wood. It's a note from Mom and Dad. Dear Marcus and Fiona, the Pelicans invited us to a wedding on the eastern shore, and we all went together. We'll be back early on Saturday. Love. Mom, Dad, and the whole family. Thank goodness you found that note, Baxter," said Fiona. Suddenly, Baxter noticed something carved into the bark of the tree. He moved closer to get a better look. What are all these words carved into the branches? asked Baxter. As he moved closer, he noticed something special about the words. Wait a minute, he said. They're all names. Fiona does all the carving, explained Marcus. That's right, Fiona said proudly. I've got the pointiest beak in the whole family. I can carve a name into a tree faster than a woodpecker. Look at this! Fiona flew to a branch. Here's my name, F I O N A, Fiona. And here's M A R C U S, Marcus. And L O I S, Lois. That spells my mother's name. And here's my father. R A Y M O N D, Raymond. Wow," said Baxter. "You weren't kidding. This really is a family tree." Marcus and Fiona helped Baxter read every name on the tree. Finally, the two birds landed on different branches, and Baxter plopped down on a patch of grass. I can't wait for you to meet the rest of our family, Baxter," said Fiona. "I know," said Baxter. "After reading all their names, I feel like I know everyone already." And with those words, the three of them 
fell fast asleep. That night, Baxter found himself tossing and turning. The next morning, he awoke with a tremendous yawn. Are they building a highway or something? He asked. I kept hearing a jackhammer or some sort of... But before Baxter could finish what he was saying, he glanced up at the tree and noticed the letter B. Then he noticed the letters A, X, T, E, R. That spells Baxter, he said to himself. He looked up into the tree and saw Fiona smiling. And when Baxter realized what Fiona had done, he gave her the biggest hug there ever was. Bear's wondering, do you think Baxter will make a good brother? Yes, Bear. They're saying Baxter likes to share. Well, Bear's asking if you think the birds will like sharing with Baxter, too. Many yeses, Bear. They're saying Baxter and the birds have more fun sharing. So, do you think everyone's happier now? Well, Bear's hoping you come back soon for more adventures in growing families. Bye for now. Please subscribe. Hi there, you found us here at Storytime with Miss Becky. I'm Miss Becky, and this is our friend Bear, who loves to read along with you. Bear has a question for you. Do you think it would be fun for a bear to try being some other kind of animal? Some yeses and some noes, Bear. <laughs> well, what if he tried being something with wings? Hmm. Well, this brown bear is really tired of all the things bears do. He wants to try being someone else. Let's put on the magic reading glasses and see what animal bear wants to be and what will happen. Bear and Duck by Katie Hudson. Bear was a bear, and in most ways, he was just like any other bear. He was big and furry, he slept all winter, and he ate lots and lots of honey. But in one big way, Bear was not like other bears. Bear's problem was that he wished he weren't a bear at all. He was tired of sleeping all winter. His fur felt hot in the summer. And he was sick of all the angry bees. Leave me alone, he growled, rubbing his sore stung nose. That's it, Bear decided. I am done being a bear. Just then, Bear heard a noise. A happy, I don't sleep all winter or have hot fur or bees stinging my nose kind of noise. Quack! The sound was music to his ears. So Bear slipped into the line of happy yellow ducks. Quack, he chimed in. He watched the ducks every move. Yes, 
he could get used to being a duck. In fact, he decided he was a good duck. Luckily, no one noticed the new duck until Bear let out a too loud and happy quack. Stop right there, Bear. What are you doing in our line? Snapped Duck. You don't belong here. But please, said Bear, I don't want to be a bear anymore. Can you please teach me how to be a duck? Please. Well, all right, said Duck. I guess I can help. How to be a duck. Rule one. Nest building. Step one. Collect twigs and old leaves. Step two. Build nest. Step three. Place egg in nest. Sit on egg. Keep egg safe and warm. Step four. Under no circumstances should you lose your egg. How to be a duck? Rule two: Swimming. Step one: Waddle into water. Step two: Flap feet, one at a time, to swim. Step three. No splashing permitted. <laughs> How to be a duck? Rule three: Flying. Step one: Find perfect hill for takeoff. Step two: Run while flapping wings and keeping beak pointed upward. Step three. Once in the air, crash! Oh dear! This was definitely not going as planned. Bear wasn't good at being a duck after all. Duck felt sorry for Bear. Don't be sad, Bear. Look, you climbed a tree. Ducks can't do that. Bear felt a little better. He decided to climb up and get that apple for Duck. The apple was very high, and the branch was very bendy. Bear reached as far as he could when. Boing! I'm flying! Bear called out happily, just like a duck. But inside, Bear wasn't actually happy at all. Flying twisted his tummy, and the landing was far too tricky. Crash! I think I prefer climbing," he told Duck. Being a bear doesn't seem all that bad," said Duck. And you make a really good bear. And a really good friend. Bear's wondering, would you want to be a polar bear? Hmm. Some say no. They'd be too cold, Bear. <laughs> well, Bear says he's going to try being either a brown or black bear, and raid beehives. Hmm. 
Well, are you hoping Bear will just stay a good reader and a really good friend? Bear's also hoping you come back soon for more adventures in learning how to be happy. Bye for now. Please subscribe. Hi there, you found us here at Storytime with Miss Becky. I'm Miss Becky, and this is our friend Bear, who loves to read along with you. Bear has a question for you. Do you think you could sleep through a party? Most say no, Bear. <laughs> they say their friends are too noisy. Well, Bear's saying he'd like you to meet his big brown bear friend in the woods who is snoring in his cave while friends keep coming over with fun party ideas. Let's put on the magic reading glasses and see if Bear's big brown friend will wake up. Bear Snores On by Karma Wilson. In a cave in the woods, in his deep, dark lair, through the long, cold winter, sleeps a great brown bear. Cuddled in a heap, with his eyes shut tight, he sleeps through the day, he sleeps through the night. The cold winds howl, and the night sounds growl. But the bear snores on. An itty bitty mouse, pitter patter, tiptoe, creep crawls in the cave from the fluff cold snow. Mouse squeaks, too damp, too dank, too dark. So he lights wee twigs with a small hot spark. The coals pip-pop, and the wind doesn't stop. But the bear snores on. Two glowing eyes sneak peek in the den. Mouse cries, who's there? And a hare hops in. Ho, oh, mouse, says hare. Long time no see. So they pop white corn, and they brew black tea. Mouse sips wee slurps. Hare burps big burps. But the bear snores on. A badger scuttles by, sniff snuffs at the air. I smell yummy yums. Perhaps we can share? I've brought honey nuts, Badger says with a grin. Let's divvy them up, cozy down, and dig in. And they nibble, and they munch, with a chew, chomp, crunch. But the bear snores on. A gopher and a mole tunnel up through the floor. Then a wren and a raven flutter in through the door. Mole mutters, what a night! What a storm! twitters wren, and everybody clutters in the great bear's den. They tweet and they titter. They chat and they chitter. But the bear snores on. In a cave in the woods, a slumbering bear sleeps through the party in his very own lair. Hare stokes the fire. 
mouse season stew. Then a small pepper fleck makes the bear rachu. He blows and he sneezes, and the whole crowd freezes. And the bear wakes up. Bear gnarls and he snarls. Bear roars and he rumbles. Bear jumps and he stomps. Bear growls and he grumbles. You've snuck in my lair, and you've all had fun. But me, I was sleeping, and I have had none. And he whimpers, and he moans. He wails, and he groans. And the bear blubbers on. Mouse squeaks. Don't fret, don't fuss. Look, see, we can pop more corn. We can brew more tea. Bear gulps. Bear gobbles. He sighs with delight. Then he spins tall tails through the blustery night. When the sun peeks up. On a crisp, clear dawn, bear can't sleep, but his friends snore on. Bear's wondering, do you think that big brown bear will have a party by himself now? Lots of no's. Well. Bear wants you to tell him what you think his big brown bear friend should do now. Hmm. Bear also hopes you come back soon for more winter adventures with friends. Bye for now. Please subscribe.